today's video on Chaos Garage, I'm going to show you how to fill up this lead acid ATV or power sport battery. We're going to zoom in close and I'll show you how it's done. Alright, so to do this job, you're going to need a few simple things. Eye protection, or better yet, a face shield if you have one. Some rubber gloves, which you can get cheap from Harbor Freight, or anywhere really. And a pair of wire cutters. Those are all the tools you're going to need. Now, of course, you're going to need your brand new shiny battery. This is an AutoCraft from Advance Auto 14A-A2. It fits the Kawasaki. Inside the box, you've got the manual. Inside of that is another box. Inside of that box is a plastic bag. And inside of that plastic bag, is your sulfuric acid. Also in there is a small tube. Don't forget that. That's for to help you fill. You've got your battery which has your upper and lower levels on it. Now this is a conventional lead acid battery. It's it's not one of the newer style sealed batteries or anything like that. Also in the box you've got a longer drain tube and you've got your hardware for your terminals. And I've got my receipt in there. Alright, so filling this is pretty easy. I forgot one other tool that would be useful. A pair of needle nose helps to get these caps out. Now these, they're just pushed in. They're not threaded in, but some batteries may be threaded. So you take out all your caps. And also don't forget, on this side of the battery where the drain tube connects to, you've got a little cap. Don't forget to take that off prior to filling it. Okay, if you look on here, when we go to fill this, you've got the lower level and the upper level. When you fill it, you want to fill it to that upper level but not past it. And as the acid soaks in, some of these may go down. You just fill it back up make sure it, it's at that upper level and then we'll go from there let's get to that point and then we'll go on to the next step so you want to connect your drain hose I've got a longer one on the ATV I'll use but this is just for filling We'll set that guy over there. We're going to open our acid. Now all these instructions are in this little book as well. Don't forget your little tube that's in the bag. So here's your, your thing of acid. This is a tube you're going to put on here to help you fill it. This little red cap on here is for them to fill it at the factory. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around so I can see it. And then I'll show you guys afterwards. Now, before I even do anything with this, I'm going to suit up. Safety equipment. Acid is not good to get on your skin. Smoke around it. None of that stuff. It's pretty evil. It's evil, but it makes things go. Now, you can buy batteries usually that are already filled, and you don't have to mess with any of this stuff, but, you know, especially if you order them online, a lot of them, they'll come where they're not pre-filled. So you might have to fill them yourself. So you're going to cut the top of this little nipple off, I'm going to call it. And you're going to attach that small hose. Just push it down on there, twist it as far as you can get it down. Alright, then all you do from there, I'll tell you what, I'm going to come around to the other side so you can watch as well. Now, this acid's open, so be careful not to spill it or get it on anything. So from here, put your little tube in, into the hole. This one's not exactly round, it was squished in the bag. And then all you're going to do is tip the thing of acid. And if it's flowing real slow, you can squeeze it. Just lightly squeeze it. Hopefully it picks that up on camera, you can see it. And you just move on to the next one. There's no shame in taking your time. All right, now once you get it filled up, like I said, some of them are gonna go down, like that one went down a little bit, and that one went down a little bit. You wanna let it sit for an hour, minimum of an hour, just like this. It allows all the bubbles and gases and stuff like that to escape that don't need to be in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set our acid right there. Wearing gloves is a good idea. I did get a little on the gloves. And we'll be back in about an hour. We'll go from there. All right, well, it's been an hour. I've topped the topped the each cell off. So now it's all at that upper level limit. So now I'm gonna push these back in. Before I do that, one thing that I didn't do, or didn't show you, but off camera, is take the little pliers and kind of lightly tap the battery. 
that'll help. You'll see some bubbles and stuff coming up. Just tap on it lightly for a minute or so till they stop coming out. So, battery's been sitting here an hour, filled. I topped it off. Still got a little bit of acid left. So we're gonna put the caps back on. Now, if you got screw-on caps, make sure you only put them on finger tight. You don't want to torque them down or anything like that. So we'll just install these caps. I'm still wearing gloves because there's still some acid on the top, just a little bit. So we're going to take that, we're going to take, take a rag, just kind of get all down in there, make sure we get all, any acid that spilled off of there. And then we're done with these. It's hot and sweaty. So now we're ready to charge. Now let's talk about charging for a second. When you fill up a new battery like this, you want to charge it as slow as possible. Now if you really want to know the real, the real way of doing it is you take your amp hours or your battery and you divide it by 10 I believe. So if we t took 14 divided by 10 that gives us 1.4. So ideally for the first charge on this, on this particular battery you'd want to charge it at 1.4 amps. Now I've only got this one charger that charges at 3 amps so that's what I'm going to use. You don't want to go over 3 amps though definitely. So I'm going to position this over here run that little tube off the table just in case any decides to seep out We'll hook up our charger. <laughs> now I'm going since this is a smart charger and it will go into float mode automatically after it's done charging, <clears throat> I'm going to let it charge overnight. So let me get it plugged in and set up. Alright, look at that. Freshly filled. It's not charged, but it says it's got 12.6 volts. That's interesting. So we're going to do 3 amp for power sport, and it's a standard battery type. It's not AGM, it's not a sealed battery, so we do standard on this one. And if you give it just a second, it'll tell us the percentage of charge. It seems to never switch when I want it to. There you go. It says it's 76% charged, 77% charged. So what I'm going to let it do, I'm going to let it charge, like I said, overnight. And then tomorrow we'll put it in the four-wheeler. Alright guys, well I will see you guys tomorrow. Alright, she's charged overnight. Actually it's the next afternoon. It's at 100%. It's been maintaining. The acid levels look alright. One's just a hair low and one's just a hair high. But they're within tolerance. I'm going to roll with it. So I need still a battery charger. And in a little while we'll throw this in the ATV. See you soon. Alright guys and girls. So the battery charged overnight. Pardon the fan. Still 90 degrees. 
battery charged overnight float charged for most of the day I had to steal the battery charger for a while while I fixed the John Deere mower the wife's out intimidating the grass right now hopefully she doesn't come down here saying it's broken again let's get this battery installed all you need 10 millimeter first thing we're gonna do is take off the bracket the battery hold down. Now like I said earlier this is the wrong battery for this ATV but that's what was in there when I got it. So you know it was working so why mess with it. But now that I gotta replace it I'm gonna replace it with the correct one. So we can do away with this uh, little styrofoam stuff. I mean, in a pinch, I guess when you need the battery, and that's the only one you can find, it, it would it worked fine. So it's all good. I generally don't like using a screwdriver on these battery terminals because it, it just kind of galls them up too easy. Take that out, take our little washer out with it. Move the terminal over here. This is for those lights I put on. Just move all that stuff out of the way. Same over here with the positive. And that should allow us to pull this out. Now, because of this wrong battery, this drain tube was routed weird. So I'm gonna have to reroute that as well. So before we go any further, let me fish that out. I'll be back in a minute. Alright, so there's our drain tube. We're going to take our new battery. You can tell the one on the ATV is quite a bit longer. So we're going to reuse this one. Now this should extend down past the frame. So if it does leak acid, it doesn't eat your metal and all that stuff. So I'm gonna fish that guy right out the back there. And then in with the new. Alright, I made sure my drain hose was mounted where it was supposed to be, not kinked. Now, I'm going to use the new hardware because we got new hardware. You got these little square nuts. They slide in, they only go a certain way. There you go, you just put everything back together. Now you know what? This new battery didn't come with washers. So I'm going to steal the washers off the old one. 
because I like the idea of having a washer on there. Then you just kind of wiggle it around in there till you move that nut around. Get it started good, make sure it's not cross threaded. threaded. Then you do your other side. But that's pretty much it as far as installing the battery after you've got it filled. Make sure all your stuff's connected. Tighten them up. and you got it in the little nut. Which I don't. There we go. Now, that soft metal doesn't have to be tightened down super tight, just snug it up good. Now, I'll make sure my caps are all down one more time since I charged it. <coughs> we'll put our bracket back on. Should be good to go. Now that fits a whole lot better in there. Now there's nothing to do but turn it on, hit the button. Cool, well that fixed it. My lights are on, they're strong. It started on its own without me having to pull start it. She's good to go. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video on this battery. If not, let me know. If you did, let me know anyway. Like, comment, share, subscribe. We'll see you next time on Chaos Garage.